When Antifa shows up to shut down a free speech rally, what does that say about America in 2020? The Hunter Biden email controversy continues to grow and it's looking even worse for Joe Biden. Plus, Dr. Scott Atlas gets shut down on Twitter. All that and more. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13 minute news hour. And God bless the United States of America. All right, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Monday. I hope you had a great week. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with what's going on in America, because if you needed a reason to vote or you're trying to get your friends out there to vote, just have them watch this story because it shows that our rights are under attack. This is the freest country in the world, folks. And yet we have Antifa and Black Lives Matter and the radical left trying to destroy those freedoms with their cancel culture. They're trying to rewrite history, tearing down statues and defacing monuments. Then they are trying to impose this new normal on people with chaos and fear and free assembly if you want to protest against alleged police brutality, but not free assembly if you want to go to church. This is what they are trying to impose. And there is no better example than what has been going on this week and this weekend in particular. Now, as you know, the Hunter Biden email story is just exploding. It is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But one of the main things behind it was Facebook and Twitter jumping out, trying to suppress the story, limit its distribution, block it all together. So this weekend, a group got together. It was only about a dozen or so people. They decided to do a pro free speech rally, a march from an area in San Francisco down to Twitter's headquarters because of the censorship that Twitter's doing on this Hunter Biden story. But then Antifa decided to show up and shut everything down. A free speech rally, not pro-Trump, not anything like that, but just for free speech, pro-First Amendment, anti-censorship from Twitter. This is why Antifa showed up by the hundreds to shut down. And here's the story. A rally called to promote free speech and denounce big tech censorship turned ugly Saturday in San Francisco when hundreds of alleged Antifa counter-protesters showed up and berated and attacked demonstrators, leaving one missing a tooth. The conservative group Team Save America organized the event to protest Twitter, which it argues censors free speech. They plan to rally at United Nations Plaza before moving the protest to Twitter's headquarters a few blocks away. But the event quickly devolved into a shouting match and violence as hundreds of counter-protesters stormed the scene. Can you believe this? We're not talking about alleged police brutality or systemic racism. We're talking about free speech, folks, and Antifa shows up to shut it down. They injured people, including three police officers. And again, this free speech rally was a small group of people vastly outnumbered by Antifa thugs who stormed in, thro started throwing bottles at them, rocks at them, and again, hurt people, hurt the police officers who are trying to keep things safe, and here's more. Video shows one counter-protester punching Philip Anderson, an organizer of the event, knocking one of his teeth out. Anderson posted a picture of the aftermath on social media and said he was attacked by Antifa. This is what happens when you lose free speech, Anderson said, over booze as the crowd threw objects at him. This is what happens, America. This is what our country is turning into. Another protester who was wearing a Trump 2020 shirt was attacked at some point by a counter protester. So this is the radical left in action. They have their agenda. And if you speak out, exercise your First Amendment rights, they will resort to violence. It's absolutely unreal. We saw in their report, the organizer, Philip Anderson, he was punched. He got on Twitter. He posted this. Antifa attacked me for no reason. That's just sick, folks. That's the organizer of the event. And we see what's happening here. We see what the censorship, it's like big tech is shutting down free speech and Antifa moves in as the enforcer. This is what we face. And the problem is, is that most Americans are good people. They just want to live their lives. They just want to do what they're doing and be left alone. Antifa knows this. The radical left knows this. That's why one of their MOs is chaos and fear. 
so they can keep people from speaking out. Because as soon as people stop speaking out, stop fighting back, the radical left wins. So we have to keep it up. We have to keep up the fight. President Trump is doing a great job calling these people out. He needs to be reelected and we need to be strong. And always remember that our numbers are there. We are bigger. We are the louder voice when we come together. We can push these people back. We just have to do it. All right. Next, I want to talk to you about the Hunter Biden email controversy, which continues to grow. But first, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. And when you do, please hit that bell so you'll be notified. We're making our push for 100,000 subscribers by Election Day, 100K by Election Day, and we can do it with your help. We just hit 96,000. We now, if you go to my Facebook page or Twitter, you can see a little meme, a little graphic that you can use to share with friends. Please distribute it on your social media platforms. We can get there. We're at 96,000 now. I think we can do it. All right, let's talk about the Hunter Biden email controversy, because as you know, this is what exploded. This is the laptop that was dropped off by Hunter Biden and just left at a computer repair shop. The guy dug into it after no one claimed it, made copies of the hard drive after he saw what was on it, gave it to the FBI, and then also passed it along, and it made its way to the New York Post. This is explosive communications with Hunter Biden, officials in Ukraine and in China, implicating the then vice president, now presidential candidate, Joe Biden, in pay for play, in corruption, flat out corruption, influence peddling, and interference. This is what the emails show, and we'll learn more about it. But this is where Twitter stepped in, Facebook stepped in, tried to block this, and here's the latest. Hunter Biden himself left his laptop computer at a Wilmington, Delaware repair shop whose owner eventually gave the hard drive's material to the FBI and later to President Trump's attorney, Rudy Giuliani. The shop owner has told a Senate committee how exactly the MacBook Pro brimming with emails about Hunter Biden's cash flow from a Ukrainian oligarch and Chinese communist-linked industrialists ended up abandoned has been a key question. All right, so even though Twitter and Facebook are censoring this story, continue to censor it. Over the weekend, the New York Post's account was still blocked. We could see it, but they couldn't do anything. They couldn't post anything unless Twitter told them you had to remove your Hunter Biden news stories. This is what's going on. But it turns out as they're censoring it, this story has been around for a couple of weeks, folks. This computer shop owner has met with the Senate Homeland Security Committee, told them what he saw, told them about what was on it, and they're investigating. And here's more. The New York Post, which first received and published some emails, reported that the shop owner did not recognize the man who left the computer in April 2019. But in a letter Saturday to FBI Director Christopher Wray, Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee Chairman Ron Johnson, Wisconsin Republican, disclosed that the shop owner identified in media reports as John Paul Mac Isaac told the panel directly that Hunter Biden dropped off the machine. So Homeland Security Committee in the Senate is looking into this. And the evidence, what these emails show, directly refutes what people like Democrat Adam Schiff are saying, that this is some kind of Russian disinformation campaign. This is actual communication with Hunter Biden, people in Ukraine, people in China seeking influence from Vice President Joe Biden and receiving that influence, receiving meetings, thanking Hunter Biden for setting them up. And we know what Joe Biden did in Ukraine, got the prosecutor fired, the Ukrainian official who was investigating Hunter Biden's Ukrainian company. We see that. There's also emails where China is making payoffs. It's absolutely outrageous. And to kind of summarize what's going on in the emails, here's more. The emails show that an executive at Ukrainian energy firm Burisma Holdings, which paid Hunter Biden millions of dollars as a board member, was able to meet with Vice President Biden in Washington in 2015, thanks to his son. The Biden campaign said the executive was not on the vice president's official schedule, but they might have met briefly. The emails also show Hunter Biden was guaranteed $10 million annually from a corrupt Chinese billionaire for what Hunter Biden called introductions alone. Another email says a company was being set up for which the big guy would receive a 10% stake. Fox News reported that an email participant identified the big guy 
as Vice President Biden. The Democratic presidential nominee declined to comment Friday when a reporter asked him about his son's business dealings. Folks, this is corruption to the top. We see what's going on. Remember, impeachment against President Trump was some kind of quid pro quo. We know that Joe Biden already did this with Ukraine. And here's more. Getting paid by Chinese billionaires and being involved in Ukraine, setting up using influence to set up business deals. This is corruption, and it should disqualify Joe Biden from being president. We just need to keep pushing the story. So next, let's talk about Dr. Scott Atlas, who is a coronavirus advisor to President Trump. I've used some of his comments, some of his clips, his media appearances, a lot on the show because we are kind of in sync on our approach to coronavirus. He got nuked by Twitter over the weekend for posting about masks, and it just shows what we are up against with big tech censorship. And I think in this case, they might have actually overplayed their hand with Hunter Biden because people are now more interested in the story. But just check out this example of what happened to Dr. Scott Atlas. Twitter removed a tweet from a top White House coronavirus advisor saying that contrary to official CDC guidance, masks don't prevent the spread of the virus. On Saturday, Dr. Scott Atlas tweeted that evidence showed masks don't work according to NBC News. The CDC released guidance in April urging Americans to wear masks in public to prevent the spread of coronavirus after weeks of recommending the opposite. So what did Dr. Scott Atlas do? What did he write? He tweeted, masks work? No. Then he cited all these places that have mandatory mask wearing and they're still having spikes. It's not stopping the spread. He also cited CDC, WHO publications that show that mask wearing is inconclusive or doesn't really work. That's what he posted. Twitter stepped in and removed it. They blocked that tweet. They removed it from their platform because it doesn't agree with what they say is the coronavirus narrative, the speak, the think that we have to do for coronavirus. He did something contrary. They removed it. And here's more. A link to Atlas's tweet now includes a link to Twitter's enforcement policies. The tweet was in violation of our COVID-19 misleading information policy, a Twitter spokesman told the Daily Caller News Foundation. Twitter prohibits coronavirus-related content it deems misleading and harmful. The company says it determines information to be misleading based on official guidance from public health authorities. So, once again, Twitter decided what's going on. The CDC and the WHO have put conflicting contrary information out from the beginning. WHO has just now come out against lockdowns, saying those were a bad idea. So there is always debate, but Twitter, Facebook, they have taken a side. And if you, even if you're a health expert, publish something, post something contrary, they'll take it down. Again, there's only one narrative that is acceptable by the far left, and that's what they're pushing. So next, let's talk about Joe Biden, because there was some interesting replies, some feedback to some of Joe Biden's comments that I want to get into. So in the most times, in the most cases, he is shut down. He is not answering questions. In debates, he's not even being asked the tough questions. But when he does occasionally get asked, he's not answering. Want to know what he thinks about court packing? He doesn't say. Want to know what he thinks about Hunter Biden and this email controversy? He won't say that either, but he did have some comments recently on police tactics. We can do this. You can ban chokeholds. You can, but, you, but beyond that, you have to teach people how to de-escalate circumstances, de-escalate. So instead of anybody coming at you, and the first thing you do is shoot to kill, you shoot him in the leg. Yep, shoot him in the leg. So let's see what actual law enforcement officials have to say about that one. Police officers and law enforcement groups pounced on the suggestion that officers were trained to shoot someone in the leg rather than center mass, the largest part of the body that has long been the firearms training target. John Evans, president of the Buffalo Police Benevolent Association, told Fox News that Biden's suggestion is absolutely ridiculous and incredibly ignorant. The guy's clueless, Evans said, and I know he's just trying to appease his left wing base, but it's really a foolish statement. So Biden is clueless, and this is outrageous. Nothing Joe Biden ever says 
will, regarding guns will make America more safe. They make us less safe. He wants to restrict access, does not care about the Second Amendment at all, and says stuff like this, shoot him in the leg. Here's more feedback. Joe Gamaldi, vice president of the National Fraternal Order of Police, dismissed Biden's suggestion as completely ridiculous, unrealistic, and a pandering talking point. Shootings are dynamic situations, and we shoot to stop the threat, Gamaldi told Fox News. It's incredibly difficult to hit a moving target. He's absolutely right, of course, and it just shows that people like Beto, Robert Francis O'Rourke, and Joe Biden, they don't have a clue. They are appeasing a left-wing base. It's not about public safety. It's not about police training like Joe Biden would know anything about that. It's just talking points, just catering to the far left because he knows he needs them and their radical platform to get elected. Otherwise, he's toast. Folks, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe, and when you do, please hit that bell so you'll be notified, and we'll see you next time. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is the 13-Minute News Hour. Okay, friends, thanks so much for watching, and before you go, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell so you'll be notified, and here's a special video just for you so you can watch even more of the 13-Minute News Hour. And don't forget to check out GOPUSA.com for the best in conservative news and commentary. We'll see you next time.